This is Getting On With Life, Biblical Wisdom for Successful Christian Living. And this lesson is Love Letters to God. My friend Frank Clishold, who was healed from lightning strike, tells how he reverted to love letters to God when struggling to pray. After Frank was struck by lightning, he had various physical effects that led to two years of disability before he was miraculously healed. What also bothered Frank in those first days was that he could not pray. There seemed to be a barrier between him and God, and this really disturbed him as he treasured his relationship with God. Several days after the lightning strike, he looked at a collection of items from his young years. Frank fell in love at age 14 with a girl who was also 14. They wrote love letters to each other and kept those letters through the years. They were wed when they were 21 and have enjoyed 60 years of married life. Frank reread those early love letters and the thought struck him that he could now write love letters to God. While Frank couldn't pray, he began penning his thoughts of devotion and love toward God. Wonderfully, by doing this, Frank found his prayer life open to him again and soon no longer needed to write things in order to connect with God. When Frank shared that testimony recently, a woman told him how struck she was by that idea. She planned to write love letters to God to activate her own prayer life. I've heard it said that words and thoughts are controlled by different parts of the brain. We express things differently in words compared to when writing about the same thing. For those who aren't practiced at writing their ideas, there can be quite a struggle getting thoughts onto the page. However, once something is written, it seems to release us to express it more freely. You might find it difficult to write a love letter to God due to finding it difficult to be affectionate to God. However, if you start with something simple, it breaks the ice and releases you to build on that expression. You could even start by copying some opening remarks, like, Lord God, you have been very good to me. That's a fairly safe statement to make. Then you could move to, I appreciate what you have done for me. That's still fairly safe, but it leads on to, you are very precious to me. From there, you could begin saying things that are affectionate and sweet to God. I love you, Lord. You are the most wonderful thing that ever happened in my life. I don't deserve the level of love and commitment you show toward me. I never want to lose the sweetness of being close to you. Once such ideas have been written, they can be read and spoken out to the Lord, giving focus to your prayers. It's the same as pouring out affection to the love of your life. Yet for some, such outpouring comes easy, while others choke on the words. Expressing yourself is a learned skill, so even if you can't do it now, it can be developed. It might be hard to say, I love you, but easier to say, I appreciate you. I value you. You are important to me. I couldn't live without you. The English language is rich in variety of expressions to say similar things. Use that variety of language to practice expressing your thoughts and feelings to God. Another way to develop this is to write a phrase of devotion to God and put it where you will see it and quote it out loud multiple times each day. Christian songs are a great source of sweet things to confess to God, such as, You are beautiful beyond description. There is no one like you. I love you, Lord. Lord, you are more precious than silver. How lovely are your dwelling places. I keep falling in love with you over and over again. Blessed be the Lord. May your heart be stirred to express your devotion to God, and may you be free to put in words things that connect your heart with God's. May you find yourself free by word, song, and text to express beautiful love letters to God. God bless you.